Hi, hope you're doing good. So today we're going to be briefly going through all of the best books that I've read so far in 2024. So this is kind of like a mid-year wrap up. I'm not going to be going through every single five star that I'd given out. I'm just going to try and narrow it down to like the very best books that I've read this year so far. Like a series that I want to recommend. That is The Hawking. I've spoken about this a lot so I'm just going to do this really really briefly. So it's The Hawking series by Zoe Draven and the ones I've read so far and I've really enjoyed are Broken by The Hawking and then the first two which I think is Claimed by The Hawking and Captured by The Hawking. Basically, I read the first two and the fourth book, which I know is backwards. But basically, the fourth book was a Friends to Lovers, which, like, Childhood Friends to Lovers, which I love. And then the, the first two were just, like, kind of, like, normalist tropes. I've given these five stars purely because of the writing and the romances, I think, and also the, just the unique world. I've read a couple alien romances and I've always enjoyed them, but I think this is just such a unique one. It gives such fantasy elements. Instead of alien, humans have basically had to, like, leave Earth. They've gone to a bunch of different worlds and they've also come to this one, which is, like, the Hawking's, like, world. In this one, it's a bunch of of is it draconians or something like that they basically were like the main species there like the, mo the most dominant species until other worlds had to seek refuge to this place now you've got different other species some make more evil some are more evil some are a lot nicer but they all kind of try and live in harmony until i think a bunch of humans kind of deplete the like the livestock around on this world the draconians are very much on like taking like small amounts and only what you need if that makes sense they end up restricting the basically all the species but also like more specifically the humans to the point where now they only live in like really small extremely poor villages where they're like starving they're abused and it's just horrible each book is basically about a horde king finding a human and falling in love a horde king is basically like a baby king compared to like the biggest king and they go around the world in like villages and it's really cool they like travel in like villages full of children warriors and women and it's such a really cool atmosphere of, like cooking together just having a really cozy big family if that makes sense they travel on these i love this series so much and i really really recommend it i've obviously spoken about it like a million times then really weirdly i do recommend this classic that i read for english literature now it's not even a classic that you'd hear of like i never heard of this before and it looks boring i remember when i first got this i was like "Ooh, i have to read this like how boring does that look when i tell you that this is the most entertaining book that i've ever read and it's so just good thoughts that she has the way that she executes this it's just immaculate i literally like bow down to this book it's amazing it's all set on class she discusses class in a way that is very like delicate brief she writes in a way where she's kind of placating towards the rich people who would obviously be reading these books at the time but also educating them and showing their hypocrisy and showing what's actually happening and i just think it's done in such a cool way there are so many amazing quotes in this obviously like the content and the writing is cool so you think like oh that's a bit boring but whatever but no it literally has a love triangle in it it literally has a murder mystery in it it's full to the brim of drama it's such an amazing book i was like what the hell is going on right now However, I will say the first half is quite depressing. It just shows you lots, lots of deaths. If you push through, there's an audiobook on YouTube. If you just push through it, like it's literally fine because the deaths are there to kind of show the amount of deaths that happen in the working class, how it's just normal. That's just what happens. No one's ever convicted for it. No one's ever sent to prison. No one's ever put to trial because it's just the working class that it's happening to. But obviously, you know, the reason why they're dying is because they're starving to death, can't get enough work, they can't get enough money. And this is all through being badly treated by the richer people like the upper class okay and so the upper class are never convicted for all these deaths that they cause until you get to the point around halfway through where there is a murder and this is a murder of a upper class man okay because of this one one murder there is then there's one massive murder mystery all because of this and people are put to trial for this murder it's such a contrast between all these ho horrible horrible heartbreaking deaths with no justice and then there is so much effort for seeking ju justice for just one upper class murder and i think that's really the murder mystery is insane i love the romance okay and then i read june first by jennifer hartman again i've spoken about this book a lot i love this book so much it made me bore my eyes out it's now made the list to my best books i've ever read a very taboo romance it honestly feels more than that it feels like a character study of this main character i can't remember what his name is great i haven't put his name in my review it almost feels like a drama sometimes but it's very very much a romance and it follows his life from when he was very young all the way to when he's older he basically loses his parents in a really tragic way and then he gets welcomed into the home of his best friend and his mum's best friend and their family and the distinction between these families is insane this his family is quite kind of hostile this family is so loving and so kind and caring have a baby daughter who's just born and she's called june and he ends up kind of imprinting on her never in a creepy way it's in a way where he's seen the horrible things that can happen in life and he is just so kind of traumatized he puts all that trauma onto her in a sense that he wants to protect her from everything it's never controlling it's never toxic although i guess it's just the most like heartbreaking caring 
protective way you will ever see, like the most protective big brother, except he hates being called their siblings, their brother or their son. He doesn't like that. If he is ever called their son or their brother, he's always like, you're not my parents. And so you follow them growing older and the romance is about June and him. And obviously they are, are like kind of adoptive siblings. It's never creepy. It is never underage. It's never weird. It caught me off guard. It made me bore my eyes out. Next up is Heartless Heathens by Santana Knox. So it is a Notre Dame, 100% Notre Dame retelling. Really but the author literally said in the um, author's note, she was like, I don't want to say this is the retelling because it's kind of not. It's just very, very loosely inspired by it. Also, if you're religious or even I'm not, I don't even know if I'm religious or not. Like I was uncomfortable sometimes by like the just like the disregard for any religion. Yeah, so basically it's, it's uncomfortable and every chapter is an upside down cross. And I was like, oh, like I don't know why I felt uncomfortable. And it, it did not hinder my reading experience whatsoever. It was so entertaining. It's a dystopian world. During a widespread disease or something like that, the church, and I, like if you picture the most horrible Roman Catholic church ever, the most horrible stereotypes you could think of about the Roman Catholic church, that is what this church is that took over. Took over the entire government. Everything is controlled by them now. People live in poverty, in workhouses. This like churchy university is run by Claude Frollo. So that's how you get Frodo, okay. And then you get Esmeralda through Romina. So Romina is this girl who was taken in by Claude Frollo when she was very, very young and she's been kept in this like watchtower and this old abandoned church her entire life. And he just comes in and he comes and feeds her like every now and then. And she's got like a bucket to pee in and like a bath, I think maybe. And it's just, it's a bad life. Like it's just look very, very like high key abuse, okay. Until one day Claude Frollo has to accept these three boys. Two are twins and one is like just like their best friend. They they are basically gonna inherit the entire devil horns worshipping like president role if that makes sense they're gonna inherit that because the guy's dying but the guy who's actually in charge right now he sent them over here to go find out what Claude Frollo is hiding so they can try and bring him down that's like a constant thing they're trying to do trying to bring him down basically they end up going here and they're like where should we stay and they're like okay we can go stay in this abandoned church tower and they basically bought the property like from underneath him and they now own it so Claude Frollo can't step inside of it and obviously there's this girl in the watchtower who's locked up there and can't come down and if Cole Fro can't come feed her, she's gonna starve to death. So when they move in, they keep hearing these sounds like what well, the house is haunted. And this girl is basically starving to death up there. Until one day she's so hungry, she sneaks downstairs into house, tries to steal their food, and is captured by them. It becomes like an insanely dark romance. It's very, very dark because the way that they treat her, or at least the way that Sunny treats her, is extremely dark. It's kind of abusive, but like it's a dark romance, so it kind of is. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's brilliant. I love it so much. And it's also a reverse harem. So there's three guys and her, and it's just so good. And it always works so well because it's like, you need the other guys to kind of balance out Sonny because he's very like full on. It's it's so good. And then I want to recommend The Sea of Roses Duology by Opal Rain. This was brilliant. This was a dark pirate romance, basically about this girl who is a pirate and she ends up tricking and taking over the most formid formidable male pirate ship, okay? So this guy is like known everywhere everywhere he's like the biggest guy like muscles like crazy scars everywhere so she tricks him still ship he's livid and he's like i'm literally gonna come after you she's like go on then thinking that like he won't because like she's literally dropped him off on the side of the water on a boat on a random island he does he ends up hunting her down that is the entire story okay the, du the duology it's so good i love pirate romances so much the storyline was just so cool as well like i loved the different places that it went to and i loved their relationship in it then i want to give a chance to talk about the throne of glass series so this series is just immaculate i've read the first four books i'm currently going through the next four books i've got a reading blog on this and i've also briefly spoken about them in all my wrap-ups so if you want a full-on in-depth review of this series then you can go and it also has spoilers on it you can go watch my reading blog of this so basically i love this series so much like i love sarah j Mass's writing it's crazy because i went into this thinking it was gonna be like a court of and roses and it is nothing like a court of and roses it's very much more fantasy based and world building rather than romance which is very interesting i just think that selena i'm in love with selena i think she's genuinely the coolest character i've ever read from we basically follow her from becoming an assassin to being captured and then working for the king it is so good this one feels a bit like hunger games in the sense that they have to do a bunch of trials and they're all competing the second one she has more freedom the third one is a really cool storyline you see more parts of the world and then the fourth one like the assassin's blade that one is heartbreaking you see about her past and you see you basically get to know her inside and out and i've said this 
about it a million times now, but I literally stand by the fact that this book, this book series, is basically like a book version of action speak louder than words. We know so much about Selena. We learn so much about her and you fall in love with her so much and all these characters, but it's not through the author sitting down and being like, oh, this is what happened to her in her past. This is what happens to her now. This is how she's feeling, blah, 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 blah. It's literally just through her actions. You learn everything about Selena as a character through every decision that she makes, through every action that she does, through everything that she says in speech. It's so interesting the way that I just fully understand Selena so much. I literally said I could write, I could do a questionnaire on her and I feel like I would get it all right, like 100 question questionnaire and I just know her inside and out. I think maybe the writing isn't as polished as A Court of Thorn and Roses, but it's still very, very good. Okay, and then a book that I really, really enjoyed and I think this is, is it like the only romance I've given five stars? Because like I read dark romances. I never read like actual just romance romances. And I think this is the only romance I've given five stars this year and I just thought it was very entertaining. So it's basically friends friends to lovers slash best friends brother to lovers. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, It also has a pregnancy trope in it. So it's so amazing. I love friends to lovers and Shep does not disappoint. He's so lovely. I read this for my spring reading vlog and I really enjoyed it. This basically follows a girl who goes basically has a one night stand and then accidentally ends up pregnant. She ends up contacting the dad and he's a little bit of a mess. So she kind of ish becomes a single parent and it's basically just seeing her go through all the stages of pregnancy, all the emotions, all of like the thought processes. And I just solidly believe that when I get pregnant, I want to reread this book because I feel like there's so much to be said in it and it goes through all the fears and it's just very, very like wholesome, but also weirdly relatable. And it's just such a brilliant book. I really recommend it. It was also hilarious. It was like the best rom-com that I've read in a while and the romance was amazing in it. I really love Shep and I thought it was just so, so sweet. Then I want to recommend A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. This was a brilliant book. This is, I've said this a million times now, it was basically like a cozy fantasy, but for dark romance lovers. So it's a monster romance, a dark romance, and it's also just severely cozy fantasy. Like it literally has a cottage core house. Think like um dried herbs hanging from the ceilings, different pots full of different like salt and herbs and things like that. It's like a little bit of magic going on, like herbal magic. There's also when you go to like the village, there's a talking, massive talking cat in a bookstore. And like you get to see her cook with like a garden full of like different vegetables and fruit. It was so good. However, it is a dark romance. So that means that it's very just good, like good, you know, spice, good romance, it's a monster romance. Um, okay, basically what it is, is there's a bunch of demons in this world and how you become a more sentient demon is you eat lots of um humans. If you eat a witch, then you will gain some powers, which is really interesting. This is following a demon. I can't remember what kind of demon he was, but basically he's got like a skull for a face. He's like six foot 100. He's massive, he's messy, he's formidable, okay? And basically this guy comes around to three human villages, or is it two, I can't remember. And he basically promises them protection every 30 years in exchange for a human. In this one village, there's this girl who has always been an outcast. She's always been pushed um, to the edge of society because when she was younger, a demon came and killed her entire family, but only left her. And everyone just thought that that was like really weird. And it meant that she was a problem. She brought them there. They had to keep her in this village. I don't know why they kept her, but they did. Maybe they kept it because they thought it might be bad luck or something like that. But basically if anything bad happens to the village, they always blame her. Like, oh, it's your fault because you brought them there. Or you did this or whatever because you give you give bad luck, blah, blah, blah. And she's always having like food thrown at her or pranks being made on her. It's just a horrible, horrible life until it gets to the point where it's like the next 30 years and the demon wants another. They call it like a bride, but you find that he just wants a companion. Like it's nothing horrible. He just wants company, um, which is really sad. He's the most wholesome little baby in the world. I love him. But basically she's getting forced to do it um, and she gets forced to become his bride. He ends up taking her and they go to his little cottage in like the demon realm. I just really recommend it. And they're just such a solid couple. I think I even cried at one point. The Unmaking of June Farrow by Edwin Young. This is a, such a unique book, like unique in the storytelling, unique in the storyline. It's so good. I loved it. Basically, it's about this girl called June and she's known for all of her life that at some point she's going to go crazy because every single woman in the Farrow line always goes crazy at some point, whether they're young or they're older or whatever. But this craziness even makes them run away or die or something like that. So she's always known she's got a face there. So she's always kind of isolated herself from other people because there's no point in getting close to someone if you can't even promise them forever because you'll be losing your mind soon. Basically, her mum ran away because of this craziness and then her nan died because of this craziness. That's why she's kind of scared. A year ago, she ended up seeing the signs and the signs are seeing a red door or hallucinating or hearing things that aren't there or seeing things that aren't there. Decides to not tell anyone. She wants to kind of hide it for as long as possible until it kind of gets too much. She ends up contact contacting the doctor, telling her best friend and then also telling her nan's best friend. When she tells her nan's best friend, her nan gives her like this, this photograph that's meant to explain, that's meant to kind of help her unlock the mystery of what happened to her mum and why people in her family keep going crazy. The woman is kind of like, have you seen the red door yet? And she's like, um, yeah, a year ago. And she's like, what? You saw it a year ago? You haven't gone through it yet? You need to go through it now. So she 
she ends up going through this door and she goes into this basically like other dimension. It's so unique and it's also a little bit of a romance. It's so heartbreaking, very character based. Next up, I reread The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I've always said that I wanted to reread this book purely because I read it so long ago. I read it four years ago now and I remember loving it, but like not connecting to it. And I was always so confused why I didn't connect to it. So I gave it a five stars because I was like, it was clearly a five stars, but just, I just didn't connect to it. I never did. And I was always quite upset. Now, having reread it, I solidly stand by the fact that it's five stars. But again, I don't think I connected to the ending. But that's feel, that feels so false saying that. In the sense I didn't connect to it, I mean, I didn't cry. Both the first time that I read it and the second time that I read it, I was always so shocked why I didn't cry. I was always so confused. And then I thought that I read it wrong. I thought that I didn't connect to it properly. The first time I read it as an audiobook, this time I read it physically. I think it must be her writing, but not in a way that it's bad. I thought this is the most stunning, most interesting book ever. The way that Evelyn Hugo is so flawed. I love that it shows you to be selfish in this world and confident and take what you want and it will pay off as long as you are kind. I love that it shows how flawed we all are as well. It shows that there are so many variations of love. Inspiration to work hard in life and take what you want. Because I feel like a lot of the time as women, you never take what you want because you always want to be polite and don't like ro um, rock a boat or whatever. It just kind of shows be powerful. You can be powerful if you act smart. I thought it was brilliant. I love every single one of the characters in here. You fall in love with them so much. I love the romance, like, you know, like the main romance. Um, I love the friendship. It's just an amazing book. It's such a solid book. And I just love Taylor Jenkins Reid as a writer. Maybe the reason why I didn't cry for this is because her writing is kind of distant. No, I did connect to the writing. That's such a lie. But I just didn't cry. And that always confused me because I cry at everything. So I think I've just figured out she's a bit distant. But then I was always like, why did I cry at Malibu Rising then? But I think that's because that hit way too close to home. And I think that really screwed me up a bit. But it's such a solid book. And I will always now, I can finally now say it's a five star. And it's one of my best books of 2024. So I'm happy that I reread it. So I can finally say that I enjoyed it. And it's a good book and it's a five star. Also, I read it on holiday in Lanzarote. If you can't tell, I'm kind of tanned. Yeah, I read it on holiday in Lanzarote by the pool. It was so fun and I really enjoyed reading it. Next up, I read The Traitor Witch by Mary Mist Mystery, I think it's her name. And this was recommended to me. Very lovely subscriber. I think your name is Bakti, ba but I don't want to say your name wrong. But thank you so much for this recommendation. Like, genuinely, I'm obsessed. I've finally found another amazing pirate romance that I love. It's just amazing. So this is, I think it's a trilogy. It's reverse harem. I think it's like meant to be six guys or something like that. It's a fantasy pirate romance. Okay, it's so brilliant. I'm just in love with it already. I gave this five stars and like already the first one is my favorite book of the year. And sometimes it's kind of hard to do on the first book, like, cause you're setting the scene. This was brilliant. And I'm so excited to read the other two. I've only just finished it and I'm in love with it. So basically this is about a girl, which it reminds me so much of Throne of Glass, like the first part of it, which I thought was funny. But, like it's not that much. And it also reminds me of Kiki's, del Kiki's delivery service, which was funny as hell. So basically in this world, there are like three main goddesses. There is the goddess for fate, goddess, um, the goddess moon and the goddess sun. The witches worship the goddess moon or they worship the goddess sun. So you kind of have two different like witch groups. There's Luna and there's Solar. In Luna, they're kind of a bit crazier. They're a bit dark. They do the darker magic. Magic are uh, the witches that take care of death, help with things like that. They're also crazy. They're also not celibate. Also take on harems as well. When the when the goddess chooses them to take on a harem, they'll give them a harem. Whereas the Solars are very much more civil and kind and they are celibate and they're very pa um, patient and very sweet. Basically, our main girl that we're following is a Luna witch, but she's also a shadow. And this is basically in an assassin. And there can only ever be two assassins at a time. And she gets sent around basically killing a bunch of people, which is why it, why it very much reminded me of Throne of Glass. And so everyone doesn't like her because she's the assassin, because they like just think that she's like a really like either scary or really bad person. In this one country, they decide to do like swaps together to kind of keep the peace between both of them. So they give like three Luna witches to the Solas and three, and three Solar witches to the Lunas. They have to kind of adopt their traditions adopt the way of life just so they can kind of become more passionate and everyone can get to know each other and stuff like that not passionate sorry um compassionate between the both of them our girl is covered in solar clothing so everyone thinks that she's a solar okay they also drive they also ride around on broomsticks with their familiars okay and she can talk to her cat she can talk to her cat and they have the funniest conversations and they're so sweet and it's actually such a hilarious book i'm, I'm obsessed with it okay that's why it reminds me of kiki's delivery service because of the cat and like the broom i think it's so funny but basically both luna and solar had priestesses end up getting murdered and she is the one that is not convicted of it but blamed for it so she has to go on the run and when she's going on the run she is wearing a solar outfit okay so like, obviously everyone thinks that she's a solar they think that she's celibate they think that she's sweet and so she ends up taking refuge on this pirate ship okay full of five pirates there's twin brothers who are both shifters and one is a seer so he can um have visions of things and he's touched by fate and their creature is so cool and then there is a vampire who's like 
he's like hundreds of years old then there's the ice fae who again is like i think he must be thousands of years old and he's like the biggest gentleman and then there is the captain who is a mage he is just crazy he sometimes reminds me of hell from hell's moving castle which is funny and yeah so those are the five guys that are on this boat and they are basically all of her mates and they all know it but she doesn't know it and they all think that she's a solar when she's actually a lunar so they're both keeping secrets she's on the run whilst this was all happening she's also having a mating dreams if that makes sense so in her dreams she visits her mate who is also a siren okay and sometimes when you read a harem you need to have a solid group of men who communicate and who are friends or just like they need to have good communication and what i love about this is they all have amazing communication i'm so so grateful for this recommendation my favorite book series of the year okay and then last but not least is a very taboo book and that is daddy unleashed by Layla roberts this is the most recent one in her montana series i love her montana series so much and this one did not disappoint this was probably one of the best ones i've read other than her daddy saving grace i feel like the both of these are so similar like similar characters and similar similar dynamics and it just similar like in the sense of how good they are i love this series so much and basically this one follows a girl called isa her stalker remy who's actually a very kind stalker what the take and then her best friend loki and it's three of them it's mfm and it's just brilliant i love it so much there's nothing else more to say other than it's brilliant yeah so those are all the books that i would say are the best books i've read so far this year i love them like i'm so happy at some of the books that i've read and i'm so excited to just read more especially now that it's summer i can just bang out so many books and have so much fun with it i'm just so excited so please can you let me know what your favorite books are of this year and if you think that you want to recommend me any books i would love more recommendations because so far i've a lot i've read a lot of amazing books from you guys but yeah so thank you so much for watching i really hope that you've enjoyed and i'll see you very very soon Bye bye